Good afternoon, everybody. This is Mark of Sea Science Film Labs, and I just wanted to make a fact check video correcting Aiden the Atheist on his belief that um, cosmic evolution is a term that was created by creationists in order to slap at the Big Bang Theory, when cosmic evolution is absolutely a term used by science professionals and used in peer-reviewed articles all the time. So... He's wrong. Let's see if he'll own up to it. Um, additionally, you know, here's an article that ex actually is from Harvard University. And you'll hear him claim in this video that there's no way that uh, a Harvard article would have cosmic evolution because it's just a made-up term. So let's see if we can correct Aiden today, get him fact-checked on this, uh, like and subscribe for plenty of fun to come, and lots of atheist whacking. Also, I'll say that it's my position that Aiden simply doesn't understand the cosmological models and his arguments are all from his own biased assumptions. There are, um, I mean, our machines that we have right now are binary in nature. They, they work on zeros and ones. And there are solar events from our sun that will randomly cause what's known as a bit flip. Um, a bit flip is when a zero will become a one or a one will become a zero. And considering how many bits and bytes and megabytes and gigabytes and terabytes make up a typical machine, it won't break the machine or anything like that. But look up bit flips. Um, if you have a computer with a few gigs of RAM, it's statistically almost certain that your computer has gone through a few bit flips over the past few days. So mutation, in that sense of the word, already happens naturally, quote-unquote, just due to um, solar events, uh, flipping he's, uh, bits within here. machines. He's um, oh. in the other chat because you can't see him on Restream now. <laughs> oh, is he in <laughs> I, the YouTube chat? Yeah, he said, Aiden, what do you know about cosmic evolution? Um, I know nothing about cosmic evolution because cosmic evolution isn't a real thing. Cosmic evolution was made up by a bunch of creationists in order to try to obfuscate the theory of evolution. And you said, cosmic yeah. evolution isn't actually talked about by any academics. Go and try and find an academic and try to talk with them about cosmic evolution. <laughs> See science. Get outside your little crap box apartment and go talk to an astrophysics and bring up the term cosmic evolution and they'll laugh in your face. This guy really knows how to get to you guys. <laughs> Try no, using I've... Google search. <laughs> I just find it funny that. that he constantly, he'll make these sort of like really bold faced assertions and then they just fall on their face every single time. Like, what do you know about cosmic evolution? I don't know. What do you know about alchemy, see science? Like they're about as relevant to each other as uh, this conversation is. I mean, like, Alchemy is not a real thing. Cosmic evolution is not a real thing. All right. Like these are not real things. You can't turn lead into gold in the same way that you can't make up a whole theory of science or field of science and then ascribe it to those group of people and say, well, they must describe all of these different things that I just made up. I think Claude can do that. He's Claude. Right, Claude? What's amazing to me is how often Aiden's uh, analogies miss the mark and fall completely outside of the argument. Uh, but his analogy here can't save him from the fact that he's completely wrong because here again, there's a 2022 article there and then this Cosmic Evolution article from Harvard University. So no matter how much he believes and how much he thinks he's right, that Cosmic Evolution isn't a term, he's wrong. And he's going to have to deal with that and come to terms with it and stop repressing all the things that fall outside of his personal biased philosophy that denies God and denies any evidence that is claimable that there is a God. Aiden has a personal philosophy that only has denial and repression holding it up. See there, Claude? Oh, okay, so it was just alchemy. I thought alchemy could be, um, what's the other word then? To alchemy. Wait. Because I thought alchemy was where you basically change something from one way to another. So, like, it could literally be, like, making water hot. What is that called? 
It's not alchemy, then, I guess. That's not alchemy. No, no, no. You're talking about chemistry. Oh. I don't know. Okay. I chemistry know. is the... I mean, alchemy was basically proto-chemistry in a very, very um, loose sense of the word. Because alchemy is essentially... Um, it's a mythical form of what chemistry seeks to do, which is to change and alter matter and energy into different states and forms in order for it to better suit our means. I've never been a huge chemistry guy. I, I sucked at chemistry in school. Um, it was really not my thing. I was a lot more of a, of, of an, of a physics guy than a chemistry guy, but and a biology guy. Alchemist for threefold. It says to find the stone of knowledge, the philosopher's stone, to discover a medium of eternal youth and health, and to discover the transformation of metals. Okay. That's right, yes. Transfiguration is the one that Isaac Newton was actually really fascinated in. He was obsessed with trying to turn lead into gold and trying to get base metals to turn into precious metals. It's it's a it's a very long time. Um school of thought within logos and the uh, chemistry yeah chemics i can pronounce chemistry so a priceless painting can't be created because it was so complex because if you saw my painting it would be simple and look like paint can spilled what <laughs> so it would look I, like i'm sorry i don't i'm dan i'm sorry i don't get that at all <laughs> Um, no, I'm, I'm telling you that, yes, a painting is obviously created because it exhibits traits that you do not see in other things in nature. It is assembled in just such a way that nothing else that we find within nature is assembled and therefore has unique characteristics of design. <laughs> Sounds like a dad at the end. You better listen this time. I that's kind of how I'm feeling with this because like I just I feel like I'm just explaining the same thing over and over again and it's just not registering. It won't. See science if you're still out there come on the show buddy. Hi big man mama. Hi. I got music playing in the background you guys can't hear it right? Right. Aiden doesn't understand design and architecture. There is very little new designs. I'm not talking about newness. Like, what your novelty and uniqueness are not necessarily the same thing. Those are not the same terms, all right? There are different terms for a reason. Okay, so yes, you're right. Novelty is a new, is very rare. Um, to, for something to truly be new and unique is not a common occurrence within nature. You're right. Um, there's <laughs> what I'm talking about is difference in a bolt in like a gear shift, like I was talking about. Okay. So a gear shift is not a, a new thing. It's not a brand new concept that's never been introduced, but the gear shift for a Honda Odyssey is going to be designed for a Honda Odyssey, it's going to be designed in just such a way that it can only work with a Honda Odyssey. All right, the gear shift for a Ford Focus is going to be designed to only work with a Ford Focus. Okay, they are different in fundamental components in just sufficiently to the point where we can see an intent in the design difference between those two different things. Whereas in nature, that's not what we observe. We don't see a gear shift slowly changing over time in order to adapt to being able to fit within an entirely new gearbox. That's not what we see. You never go into the nature and get the feeling of awe and wonder. Of course I do. Of course I get the feeling of awe and wonder in nature, Dan. That's absolutely true. But like I just explained earlier... There's going to be plenty of things all over this universe that are incredibly beautiful, all right? Like I said, I'm sure that there was a wonderful sunrise and sunset on Ganymede today, all right? But not a single human soul witnessed that. 
All right. Is that is that unjust in any way, shape or form? Of course, it's not unjust. It's just a simple fact of the universe and where we are within it. All right. There's not a specific design. It's not there for us to feel awe and for us to feel a specific way. That's just a byproduct of an incredibly large amount of different circumstances. I think Claude fell asleep. Are you there, Claude? <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, you big man. You're assuming by your worldview that it was not created to be beautiful. Of course I assume that. Of course I assume that. Why would I assume that it was created if I'm not a creationist? Like, what is that even? A, how is that even a criticism, Dan? I don't, I don't even understand that as a criticism. I really don't. Because, yes, of course I'm not going to assume that it was created. I'm not a creationist. There was what wonder. Why did Dan come on the show? Yeah, that's a good point. What if they had a debate between uh, an attack team debate of Aiden, Big Bad Mama versus C and Dan. Okay, so hey Dan, that's sure. your worldview saying that nature was not created to be beautiful. So was the Tsitsi fly created to be evil and to give humans suffering and pain and torment and all of that? Was it created for that purpose? Oh wait, you get a get out of jail free card with that though, because there's the fall of man where everything can get excused away from God and it's just all our fault. So yeah, nature was created to be beautiful, but the tsetse fly was not created to be uh, an abomination. Because that'd make because that'd make the big guy look bad. I mean, it's just a silly argument. I'm sorry, Dan, but it is. It's an, Nature was not created to be beautiful. There's plenty of things in nature that humans consider to be incredibly abhorrent. Have you ever heard about the Adeli penguin? About how the Adeli penguin, they'll literally form necrophilic rape gangs and go around and rape corpses of other Adeli penguins. Okay, there's plenty of things in nature that are very, very not beautiful, Dan. Well, the concept of design, especially with complex design, is that by our unified experience, complexity needs a designer. Okay, so if complexity needs a designer, Dan, then at what level of complexity does something no longer need a designer? If it's just a standard that applies to everything, then it's not a real standard. It's just some fancy wordplay that you're using. Okay, complexity does not require a designer. There's plenty of things that are very, very simple in this world that form incredibly complex systems very, very quickly. Like the game of life is a great example. Like the game of life as um, a concept is rather simple. You know, there's only a few spots on the board and they'll light up and you go to different spots and you roll dice and all that and you play the game. But there's a thousand different outcomes that could come from that seemingly very simplistic system. Okay, there's there's nature seems complex, but if you break it down, it's just an incredibly large amount of small systems working in tandem with one another. All right, it, it looks complex because you're looking at it as a whole, but complexity is an arbitrary thing that humanity has decided to designate upon things. That's the point that I'm making with this complexity argument, is it's just arbitrary. It's just, oh, I have a feeling about this, therefore it must be designed. Well, that's a garbage argument. I'm sorry. That's all right. We forgive you. I'm, I'm boring everyone in this room to sleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. We forgive you. Well, uh, Aiden, uh, what else? If you debate Ken, what would you like to de uh, debate about? I told you. I, wanna, I want to go in the middle of the room, no script, no Google, no anything, and I just want to debate him on evolution, and I want to see how he does without his script. Uh -huh. Would you like to debate him on what Claude wanted to? Debate him on evolution of taxes 
<laughs> no, I'll debate them on whatever. The only requirement I have for that debate is that we're both on equal footing. I don't have 20,000 slides that I've put together over the course of 30 years coming into the debate, so let's go on even ground. <laughs> yeah, he said that's the uh, seventh uh, part of uh, evolution. <laughs> but I know that he can't do it without his script. He just can't. You know, he acts like he's incredibly knowledgeable about this information, but anybody can read words on a screen. Okay, that's anybody can do that. If I wanted to go to chat GPT and input chat GPT's uh, best arguments for evolution and debate Kent on that, that's about the merit of argument that Kent's using. He's just relying on other people's information and relying on things that he hasn't really changed or altered in any meaningful way for a very long time, and that's not an interesting debate format. I don't want to debate Kent Hovind's script. I want to debate Kent Hovind. Hey, <clears throat> I have a question. Um, it's a, a brain teaser question. It says, what is so fragile that saying its name breaks it? Claude. Saying its name breaks it. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good right there. Pretty uh, sure it was a quad? I'm pretty sure. My first uh, search was Cosmic Evolution from Harvard University. That's a right wing creationist group. What? Concept of design, especially with. I don't know, I already read that one. I, I somehow doubt that there's articles from Harvard University talking about cosmic evolution. Harvard. Uh -huh. What about the seventh part of evolution? Evolution of taxes. <laughs> so what do you go on saying? He said he wanted to debate about evolution of taxes. I don't know if you're seeing C science or not, but he's out there just see. going crazy. Uh -huh. That was so funny. I don't understand why this is so difficult to find um, cool games online. I mean, there used to be cool ones. Oh, are you talking about like flash games? Yeah. There used to be there used to be a golden era of flash games on the internet and unfortunately that era is come and gone. <gasps> oh no. Uh, uh, Cod, are you still there? He's taking a nap. Cod yo. Oh sorry. Hmm. Cardio. But, uh, Aiden. That'd be a good debate. You versus. <gasps> um. Okay. Sorry, I'm just looking. I'm trying to find, like, something, you know, like something funny or something, but. Well, oh, Aiden. Here's this guy, uh, this news guy looks just like you. Poor like guy. An older, like an older version of you. Um, news guy. C Science says, um, are you seeing his comments, Aiden? I, I know you can't see him in Restream. Um, I do not. Aiden, Aiden can contact DAL and set up the debate, and Hoven may even take the time to debate him, but will Aiden? He's debated Kent before. Read it and weep. Um, okay, I don't know what that is. Uh, I've I've already debated Kent. Missing everybody in this room witnessed me debate Kent. Yeah. Okay, so it's 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 not like I'm running from anything. See science. I'm not afraid. But the point that I'm making is that if I'm going to get into another debate with Kent Hovind, see science, I'll go into the middle of the room and I will spin around in my chair and I will show that my hands are empty and I will stay in the middle of that room for the rest of the debate. All right, to prove 
that I'm not accessing any external information or any external links or anything like that. I am talking purely extemporaneously off the cuff of my knowledge on this topic, and I just simply want him to do the same because I do not want to debate Kent Hovind. I, or sorry, I do not want to debate Kent Hovind's script. I want to debate Kent Hovind, and I want to know his actual knowledge on these topics without having to rely on this crutch that he uses in every single debate. And you know what? If he's as knowledgeable about these things as he claims that he is, you know, he's been studying these things for longer than I've been alive, hasn't he, Sea science He should wipe the floor with me. He shouldn't have any issue with that whatsoever. <laughs> Claude's boring. <laughs> wow. It was on Brett Keane's way back, yeah. I mean, that was the unfortunate thing, was, was that Brett Keane was the moderator for the debate. So, you know, it got removed from YouTube, and there's no trace of its existence and left, unfortunately. So, But I can tell you right now, there are numerous witnesses to it having taken I'm place. There. Me too. I saw it. Unfortunately, part of the reason why it got taken down was because the stuff when Chris Baker came on didn't get segregated into its own stream. I kind of wish that that got put into its own stream. Sorry about that. All right, Scooby. All right, I'll get. I'm going to take you outside. This dog, so demanding. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I need to use uh, the bathroom. What? Oh, I need food. Oh. <laughs> what will you um, actually find at the end of a rainbow? Eight, what do we uh, actually four. find at the end of the rainbow? Yeah. Um, an original Kent Hovind argument, because you can't actually find the end of a rainbow. Uh, the letter W. <laughs> I'm just looking at the questions that I had in here already. Sea science come on the show. In here. Stop hanging yeah, out right? in the chat. Come on the show, see science. I will be on Missing Mod's show Saturday morning. Yeah, me and Dan are doing a show on Saturday about Bohemian Grove. So we're going to talk about that first and then probably open it up to everybody else. But um. <clears throat> I just find it funny how he said that he was going to come on the show. See science last time we had a conversation in the comments while you're here. You told me that you were going to come on the show. You said, see you there, and you gave your little waving emoji, and I was quite excited because I wanted you to come on, and for some reason, you just haven't done it. At all. And I just, I'm, I'm wondering why. Do you, do you need to be on a platform that is inherently biased towards you in order to make your argument? Because it doesn't exactly ring all that well towards the validity of your argument. Um, if your argument is true, then the truthfulness of it should shine through regardless of who's in attendance. Ain't nobody gonna um, scream over you. I'll shut them up. I'll just smack them around a little bit. No, <laughs> I'm talking to C-Science, sorry. What I love about C-Science is just how bitter he is towards you for allowing people of alternate thinking to come on. Like, uh, he, he says, Mr. Mod gives a platform for all these Muppets to cry about Kent Ovin and all of that. And, I mean, you got to admit, C Science, the jokes we make about Kent are pretty good. They're pretty well, good. He, They're um, pretty top shelf. If he's wanting to, um, you know, if he's wanting to uh, stop me, he's doing the wrong. He's doing it wrong. Because <laughs> as soon as I see a trigger, I'm going to jump all over it, <laughs> you know. I just love Trigger. Oh, I mean, he, he acts like he's such a, a a big tough guy all the time, and then he'll uh, immediately run to atheistic repression, like the little bitch that he really is. Well, I mean, and then he's talking about um, blocking, and I blocked you because you were annoying the crap out of me that day. <clears throat> like, I wanted to, um, yeah. Anyway. Come on, Scooby. Uh, that was annoying, and that's why I did that. It had nothing to do with you and Aiden. Um, exactly what Aiden claims doesn't exist. Well, just I don't know. I'm just tired of hearing him argue with the chat. You know. Well, tell me it doesn't exist on the show, C Science. Come on the show and tell me just how thoroughly it doesn't exist. I mean, come on and make a fool out of me. Make me cry, like you thought that I did um, on the last time. I do find it funny that all this time later he's still, still. You you kept coming to 
uh, t- to the backstage and you kept putting stuff in the private chat to where the private chat was just constantly in my way the whole time. And that enraged me. Like I lost it. <laughs> like I was so mad that day. <laughs> Makes me mad just thinking about it. Cause it's like, you don't. Yeah, but it's fine. We're, we're, we're past it. So you, I mean, me you back. called, you so. called Missy mod, a repressive whore in the private <laughs> chat and asked for a wrench, like a little fucking bitch. <clears throat> He called me a bitch too, but yeah. Yeah, but he's acting like a bitch when he does that, where he needs to go into the private chat and beg for a wrench so that this bitch can't have any authority over me. <laughs> well, if you're such a big, strong man, then that bitch shouldn't have any authority over you anyway, shouldn't they, big cock alpha Chad? Come on, bro. Well, Come on the show. Hey, Come tell me. Relax. Logan don't like all them words. Ooh. All them bad words. You, right? Oh. I thought you didn't you didn't like cuss words. Oh. Um, and um, don't give him any compliments, okay? <laughs> I just called him Big Cock Alpha Chad. Hey, um, Big Bad Mama, I believe in Noah's Ark too. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Sea Science is like Hoven's Mexican gardener that goes over there every once in a while and does a bunch of free labor for him, and maybe just maybe Hoven will let him. Uh, Go in the jacuzzi after hours if he does a good enough job, if you catch my drift. But that's about the most that he does with his life, from what I know. Wait, who? Oh, uh, Stink Science Flim Flams. Oh, I don't know if he's even been to DAL, has he? Oh, I've heard that he, uh, yeah, he, he, he pulled the shift or two in the DAL cotton fields. Um, Stink Science, you don't have to be a raging um ass all the time like you know relax dude i don't know what your problem is but all you got to do is just wait i don't know if you can't where is he him. i want to see this he's out in the um uh in the chat uh on youtube oh. the youtube chat oh. you seem to think i'll have to go check theories and sci- our science who's this Velvet G. Why are you calling me a raging ass? Okay, I'm sorry. I said you don't have to be like one, you know? <laughs> like, because why are you like, like, let's just drop it. Stop trying to fight with everybody or come in if you can. I'm sure you have another account. Like, if you don't, then what are you doing with your life? Well, he just always acts <laughs> like he's such a big, tough guy. And then he's always got so much to say in the comments section. But, I mean, come on the show, see science Aiden's running scared. Anyways, I'm not going to come on the show that he's on because he's scared. It's like, okay, dude, whatever you say. I didn't go and meet him at the bike racks because I knew he wouldn't be there because he was scared. It's like, I'm at the bike racks, dude. I'm right here. Uh, thinks there are ice canopies dividing the three heavens. He thinks that right now. What would that be? The firmament? I don't know. <clears throat> Kent had no script talking to Mark or on the show yesterday. Oh, wait. Um, Aiden has claimed again and again that cosmic evolution isn't a term. I never said it wasn't a term that exists. I'm saying that it's a term that creationists use to try and straw man the theory of evolution and to try and append a whole bunch of things to evolution that have nothing to do with evolution whatsoever. Evolution has to do with the bio explaining the biodiversity of the planet as it exists right now. That is as much and as little as the theory of evolution has to talk about. It has to, it it literally is just there to explain the biodiversity of this planet as it currently exists. It doesn't say anything about the Big Bang. It doesn't say anything about physics. doesn't say anything about inflation. It doesn't say anything about the beginning of life. But you people will insistently, again and again and again, append these things to evolution when it doesn't actually res- have any appendition. It, it doesn't warrant it whatsoever. There's no appendices required for this. And you know why I know that? Because I've
taken the time to to study your religion, see science. Okay, that, I've taken the time you know. to study your faith and study <clears throat> your probably. Bible, and I don't go around misconstruing what the Bible has to say all the time. Okay, I don't go around saying a bunch of crap that isn't actually in the Bible. I can represent your worldview accurately. You cannot do the same for me. So it just goes to show how little you actually care about the truth as you just so strongly, steadfastly claim all the time that you're a representative for it. You don't give a crap about the truth. You never have. He said you give I a crap harboring... about making yourself feel better. He said I was harboring atheists again, so I just banned him. <clears throat> He's gone, <laughs> like, for good. Because harboring I'm atheists. Like... Why, so allowing atheists to exist on a channel is harboring them now? What are we in the Holocaust, see science? Like, get over yourself, dude. Yeah, right? Harboring atheists. We invited you to come on the show. Who's being harbored? All those harbors throughout history that invite warships to come in and fight, you know, that's a real common characteristic among harbors. Give me a fucking break. <clears throat> what an embarrassment. Thank you, Robin. I don't know what that was for. Thumbs up. I'm guessing because I got rid of, you know, cry science. Nothing of, uh, nothing of value was lost whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's totally rude. It's like, dude, I, I I can call you a raging ass because um, you know, yeah, you call other me. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. He was acting like it. I get sick of that. Sorry. That's, sorry, it's not your fault. You're always very good, gangster ghost. Oh, thank you, uh, Aiden. Almost, almost as good as Claude. Oh, thank you, Claude. Are you all right? <laughs> yeah, he's just tired. Oh, my little Claudies. He called you stuff. Oh, <gasps> not stuff. <laughs> yeah, um <laughs> Yeah, me and C Science were talking in the side chat when Kent Hoven came on yesterday and he was talking about principles of design like Dan was talking about. And every time I ask a creationist, I'm sorry, but this is just my genuine experience. Every time I ask a creationist to list me the principles of design, they, without fail, just provide a whole bunch of arbitrary criteria for what they think meets the definition of design or not. And I always find that quite fun. It turns out, out that cosmic, cosmic evolution, evolution is exactly, exactly what it's called, Aiden. Aiden. And you're wrong. I reviewed articles and by professional right. scientists, so you're wrong. And Hovind was absolutely correct. Um, I don't know why you talk so patronizingly towards people that are more educated than you. So let's just see. Let's find out. And you know, this article is from Harvard, the exact school where you claim that there's no way there'd be a article out of Harvard that would explain or call it a cosmic evolution. Well, this is just an assertion born from your own biased assumptions, which is the same thing that you're doing when you claim that atheism, like there is no God, you're denying that there is a God. This is like your best guess, and Aiden, those are called beliefs, not science. And the problem is Aiden seems to not be able to differentiate between his own beliefs and science where Hovind can. In fact, Hovind knows the definition of science. And he continually explains the difference between his beliefs and what his best guesses are and what is observable truth. So, back to Aiden. Because to me, um, as, as, a, as an atheist who's constantly told that he's arrogant for assuming what God does or doesn't do or what he would or wouldn't do or this, that, or the other. All of those people do exactly that when they talk about what is or isn't a characteristic of design. They just step into the shoes of God real quick and they put on the cloak and they start with, for just a moment. They just tell you what is objectively designed or not or what the characteristics of design are. You know, that's not incredibly arrogant for a created being to do. Sorry. 
<laughs> I don't know. It just it's, it, it comes across as very silly to me. It's all really. Is this silly I Billy Gum Chops? I That's think right. We're all, uh, and we're all hypocrites. <clears throat> I agree with you there. We're all hypocritical on one level or another. It's impossible not to be. It's just a matter of trying to mitigate it as much as possible. I mean, when do we get into the... Huh? You're not a hypocrite. You're an angry oh. lady. I'm a hypocrite. I am definitely a hypocrite. But um, I... I don't. That's why I don't like this. Um, what aboutism and straw man and and all that. It's like, look, um, I'm taking the gloves off. We're gonna fight, right? Like, I'm not. I'm not worried about uh your rules and what I can and can't say. I just cannot stand that. But I guess you know, I don't make the rules, so <laughs> everybody would be uh, Jerry Springer if it was up to me. I guess. Jerry, 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 Jerry. Sometimes that's the only thing that works for some people, you know? Like, they need to be smacked in the mouth. You know? Once again, there's a career I, that I, I missed out on, man. There's a career I missed out on. If I what? could have been the Jerry Springer of our generation, that would be that'd be a great career for me. You would <clears> be <throat> the best at that, for sure. I talked with Gangster Ghost about different careers throughout history that have come and passed, and the one that I really regret missing more than any other is a garden hermit. Because these like these lords and ladies in medieval England and France or Renaissance era England and France, they literally like build these artificial grottos and cottages and stuff, and they basically just hire a living yard gnome to just live in there and be all mysterious and stuff. Like that was literally their job was just to be like this mysterious or garden hermits, and this one guy got hired. Be- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's I can make you being a garden gnome. Or a garden tool. Or I'm just a regular garden. tool. I'm not even a garden tool. <laughs> well, I was thinking like hose and stuff. Garden tools. <clears throat> Hello. Um, I just want to say. Oh, I'll take that mom's out. Hi, Aiden. You Swede. Just, just so everyone knows, I'm eating ice cream. Hi, Miss Alcon. Oh. Hi, Logan. My gosh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I must have I'm driving <laughs> a pink truck. pushed off the screen. I'm sorry. No. Can, I, can I ask Sea Science Film Labs to get off of my pecker for just like three minutes? Just three <laughs> minutes. Can you get off my pecker? Um, more comments. More comments. I really appreciate it. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, what voice should I read this one in? Uh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alinsky's rules for <laughs> radical number four hold us accountable to our high moral standards while they have no standards to be held accountable for. <laughs> well then. All right, who's this? Who should I read this person? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. Um, Big Bird. Elderly. Oh, Big Bird. Yes. Um, <laughs> hold on. I need to get reference for Big Bird. Hold on. Yes. <laughs> Give me one sec. Yeah, I just gotta. I just gotta calibrate this real quick. I Take hear you. Job very serious. Thank you, Tom. Oh God! Stop being all. Dr- there we go. All right, all right, I got it, I got it. Nine people in this video conversation, and only Kent shows his face. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my. (laughs) But Uh, Sea Science, I'm going to read, like, Richard Nixon. Um, (laughs) Cosmic evolution. That's what it's called, Aiden. Thanks for fitting into the stereotype that Hovind has defined for self-claimed quote-unquote atheists and quote-unquote agnostics, Aiden. Random binky emoji. (laughs) Spongebob? Without a scientific explanation for where time, space, and matter came from, evolutionists don't have a coherent theory. 
they should admit it's a religion and help remove evolution propaganda from all public schools. I'll do Patrick for this one. Okay. Patrick Swayze? No, Patrick Starr. Okay, okay. okay. (laughs) Dr. Hoven has an internal grinding strength like a mountain. How he perseveres through these little swarms of devils is really something to behold. It's inspirational and aspiraminational. I hope I can express in my own life even just a portion of his tender heart (coughs) and driving passion. These critics should be very mindful, just like me, that their behavior is damnable. Such pathetic (laughs) losers need to get a life. Preferably like making comments in a comment section that nobody reads or gives a crap about. (laughs) Well, all right, to be fair, we are reading it. It's true. I I'll, be, I'll like it just to show my support. I'll, I'll I like don't want to be uh, making fun of random people. <laughs> you know, let's not uh, do that. Why not? Because that's just mean. Well, we all know this is just Chris Jones's army of sock accounts. So, oh my goodness, it's all good. He's literally he's, the guy. He's that not said a person. No, no he uh, said no to well, doing that. <laughs> sure, he probably knew he was being recorded. <laughs> but uh, pedophiles Ow. aren't people, so he's fair game. Come on. Um, anyways, but these has. people That doesn't mean these people are them Let's find people that we well, know there's, we've already there's established comments. There's comments We've already established that it's all of his sock accounts Alright, Squidward Tentacles is this next one Okay, perfect <laughs> This is just an attack Dr. Hoven session Get to the topic And if not, stop the debate And get more quote-unquote Grown-ups together And when you people can come together And create a Definite debate And not waste our time (laughs) This is the way children talk to each other Hoven bashing As a mod You did the poorest job Of moderating I've ever heard Exclamation mark, exclamation mark can you Mark, you... <laughs> is believing, and that stands up in court with prayers. Actually, that's a high five emoji, but people think it's a prayer emoji. No one right. really people high five at the death of a loved one. Anyways, with okay. high fives and love. Can, uh, can you see my replies? Uh, no. Are you serious? Are you guys serious about that? Yeah, that, 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 that thing is a high five. That is a high five emoji, not what? a prayer emoji. Yeah. I'm so glad I've never used that for anything like that. Oh my goodness. I'm just thinking about all the. <laughs> just... Yeah, there's oh, your mom died. Are... High five! Yeah, right? Praying for you, Grand! <laughs> really oh, hoping my... for that uh, sports ball scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> Good old sports ball. You gotta love the douchiest ball. religion gives the douchiest prayers. High five! <laughs> what happened to the other? Oh, we can't show this one. What happened to the other channel? <laughs> Let's delete that one. Hold on. Um, uh, I'm so that. sad. <laughs> Don't you can't read my comments. Let's report no. that. Um, unwanted. No. Um, uh, let's, let's do hate speech. Hate speech. <gasps> what did you it say? It said, what happened to this other channel? Uh, they're talking about Kent's main channel. I've got to get this taken down. They're asking about what happened to... Uh-oh. Um, Kent nope. That's, That's got to go. go. That's yeah, got to exactly. go. Um, Image do you control. Think, do you think hate speech or graphic uh, violence works better, or do you think harassment or promote bullying? Promotes terrorism. Uh, it's yeah, definitely promotes harassment. Terrorism. No, it definitely <laughs> promotes terrorism. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, we received your report. Oh no, I thought I had to do another thing first. Oh no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Man. <laughs> well, show, me, show me what you really like. <laughs> Going Dang. off the rails on the crazy train. All right. Um, Kent. You should immediately apologize for defending yourself and not being perfect. Because that's what I was saying to him. You know, in the specific example I gave to him, 
it was can't you need to stop being anything but per i mean like it's almost like the bible says that if you're going to be an authority in the church that you're supposed to be beyond reproach you know never well, never mind that little nugget <clears throat> jesus even said be perfect as i am perfect or as my father's per- you know what, what? i've got to write a reply sure. but he Hold did on. say be perfect how so, you doing? good luck with how that how you doing with that yeah i, was gonna say. I, uh, I don't know you tell me how's 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 my driving <laughs> how's perfect too fast oh sorry go ahead yeah right that's a good point Dang, he is killing that keyboard. <laughs> easy, Aiden. Oh, do you think Take this is it easy? It? The keyboard you know, hasn't done anything it. to you. Right. Look Chill. Chill, bro. He said, how about some Mr. Krabs? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Um, let's see. Let's find, let's find eight, it. Seven. Kent and Cindy bring the fear of God to me. I hope I am not deceiving myself by thinking I've forgiven everyone. There's only one thing that seems to come to mind, as if unforgiven from time to time. But right now, I let that go again, and will love that person in prayer. Jesus says, pray for that sailor, me matey. I do, (laughs) and I be holding that struggle right. Otherwise, like Kent and Cindy... Heading for Davy Jones' locker. <laughs> All right. That was good. Oh, wait, it's over? <laughs> that was a really long one. I was- oh, I had another one in mind, but I lost it. <gasps> Come on, let me type, YouTube. Why are you lagging so hard? Lagging like a... 2006 Google chat room. Holy crap. Pretty sure the Bible Morgan Freeman. Pastors being beyond reproach. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like a typewriter, too. Or not a typewriter, but like one of them old keyboards. You should see Mackenzie type. She types pretty fast, but she does like only uses her pointer fingers. It's it's crazy. I mean, so she doesn't say like super Freeman. fast, but um, yes. Okay, so let's let's read some more of this. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, I need to take a drink of water for this one. And then do Dustin next. That that one's funny. <clears throat> <laughs> and his lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentor till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother that trespasses. Matthew 18, 34 to 35. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust? And not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world, man? And if the world (laughs) shall be judged by you, and ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters, Mark Stoney, like the spelling of Zaire's name, know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more? Wow, wow, we're gonna Logan, you're gonna judge missing mod. That's pretty crazy. How hmm. much more things that pertain to this life? Lo- okay, this is getting bold. It's getting boring. All right, I need a new voice. All right, moving on. Yeah, because uh, I didn't realize it was comment. a Bible verse. I didn't realize well, that it was, was a Bible that verse. That was Dustin, and, well, we'll just let Dustin be. I think we're out of comments. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're out. We're almost out here. We're running low. Um, well, I, I've got... Um, <laughs> running low. <laughs> I've got... Well, yeah, but they're really short, so you can't really get a lot of voice in for them. But, all right, give me a new one. I'll do, you know what, John F. Kennedy. All right, I'll do one for you. More desperate atheists attacking Kent. Nothing new. <laughs> you need. To it's funny though because a lot of these, rage. a lot of these comments were like, "Oh, there's so many atheists. Why do the heathen rage?" Uh, there were. I, I don't think there was any time when there were more atheists in that room 
than Christians throughout the whole entire stream. Yeah, but do you think any there of these people were... give a shit about that? Well, that doesn't matter, right? I don't either. But they're just saying we're all atheists, and it's just patently false. Yeah, because it's a. Uh, I mean, there's a, a Eastern a Orthodox priest. It's a Christian on his channel. Between, yeah, between but according Christian to guys, according to see how I blow and other people in the uh, community, you better um, stop it. That's, that's not nice. uh, <laughs> it's not a real priest. I like Lupin. He's a good. Dude. I don't. Lupin's a piece of garbage. <laughs> oh well. I'm gonna have to pick I'm, a side, I guess. No. <laughs> I mean, if you like Lupin, that's your choice. You can if you want, but just know he doesn't like you and doesn't care about you. Um. Yeah, I guess that's pretty. They probably don't deserve it. <laughs> if that's the, if that's true. <clears throat> I mean, the uh, aim of this stream. Uh, just uh, out of curiosity. Nicholas Cage. Oh man. <laughs> Okay, um, hold on. There wasn't one. It was supposed to be a Valentine's Day, a late Valentine's Day stream for me and Logan. Logan. That's not science. That's a religion. This is the beginning, the, the evolution of the cosmos. Where did time, space, matter come from? They say it came from a dot. Here it says, this guy said it was roughly the size of a human being. Well, it's bigger than a dot. And But this is taught all through the textbooks. I'm surrounded by hundreds of textbooks. Answer as you please. Sure. sure. So I, I thought I had a serious question. Don't say it's an important question. Don't give me that much uh, connotation to what I'm about to say. <laughs> no. Um, what, what what I was going to ask though, Kent, was uh, you you had mentioned um, cosmic evolution as one of your facets of evolution. Um, why do you consider cosmic evolution to be a thing when the wider body body of science uh, does not? Like uh, most most scientific journals, if, if not all serious scientific journals, when you look into it, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you were to try and find the term cosmic evolution within it that wouldn't be a term that you would find anywhere within it so i'm just wondering why you decide to use a term that is not used whatsoever within actual scientific fields okay well first of all i think a term is used cosmic evolution certainly the principle is where did time space and matter come from you can't have amoeba turning into humans until you have time space and matter they show these pictures of a Big Bang with nothing exploding, making everything. They want to skip over this because it's embarrassingly stupid. This one says, European Space Agency, time, space, and matter all began with the Big Bang. <clears throat> In a fraction of a second, the universe grew from smaller than a single atom to bigger than a galaxy. You can tell all of them, I said that is stupid to believe such a thing. That's not science. That's a religion. This is the beginning, the, the evolution of the cosmos. Where did time, space, matter come from? They say it came from a dot. Here it says this guy said it was roughly the size of a human being. Well, it's bigger than a dot. And But this is taught all through the textbooks. I'm surrounded by hundreds of textbooks. They do teach that the universe began with a big bang 13.8 billion years ago when a tiny, dense fireball exploded. This is the essential first step of their evolution. It's, it's like me saying, well, if I, if I said, well, let's assume elephants can fly. And then I go on and tell a story about elephants flying. Stop, stop, stop. Elephants can't fly. There is no Big Bang. There is no time, space, matter to be created. So the first step they have to have is the origin of time, space, and matter. Where did matter come from? They just teach. They call it the Big Bang. This is actually cosmic evolution. I can Why do you throw stones in glass houses by saying that, though, when your religion can't meet that very same standard, according to that very same standard well, of okay. evidence? Good point. Where did time, space, and matter come okay, from? Okay, Aiden, uh, Aiden right. I believe that uh, Kent answered your question. Let's move no, on to right. Gangster Ghost's question. Uh, let me add, yeah, we, let me we, add we have quite a few people. Real quick, Kent, and then we're going to move on to Gangster. Sorry, I did, I, did, uh, I did drag it. I'm sorry. I apologize to Gangster well, Ghost. 
I no admit, I admit that I believe by faith God created the heaven and the earth. I admit mine is a religion. They don't admit theirs is a religion. They call it science and want everybody to pay to have that taught in public schools. Evolution, cosmic evolution, origin of time, space, matter from a dot smaller than an atom. That is not science. It's a belief. And they're welcome to it. I don't care what they believe. But don't call it science and don't put it in our science textbooks and don't make me pay to have all the kids learn that. What was before the Big Bang? This kind of propaganda is in all the textbooks. I could spend an hour on it if you'd like. This is what they're teaching. And so I say, look, why don't you guys admit the Big Bang is a religion and keep it out of the public schools, even if it later turns out to be proven true? Until then, it hasn't been proven true, just like macroevolution, an amoeba turning to all the different creatures. That's not been proven true. If they make these family trees and the kids have to learn this kind of stuff like it's part of science, this isn't part of science. I'm trying to purify the science text. Thank you, Kent. Let's get back to real science. Thank you, Kent, for your Gangster answer guys. there. Uh, Gangster, go ahead, bud. Oh, uh Turns out cosmic evolution is exactly what it's called in peer-reviewed articles. Here's one from Harvard. Would you ever like to debate Aiden on my channel? Hey, you could have uh, a fat Catholic be the moderator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would certainly be a time. Translate that for me, Mark. I didn't right. understand what G you said. Gangster, Gangster Ghost is a dear uh, friend of ours and, and a precious member of this community we've formed over here. Uh, he's been hosting a lot of shows that have been really popular. He's gaining a lot of traction. He's a young, up-and-coming up and coming YouTuber. And, yeah, I think that'd be really cool for you and Aiden. Because here's the thing. Aiden has engaged with you in a debate before. But that footage is lost to uh, the annals of YouTube history. Uh, I think it would be b very fitting for you and Aiden to have another discussion. And Gangster Ghost would be a most gracious host. Oh, I'll be glad to debate anybody on creation evolution. And how about there's, that fat Catholic? And that fat Catholic. <laughs> there are certain topics right, so, that just I don't have I don't have time to I don't have time to put out every fire in the world, so I pick on this sure. one creation evolution. I don't want to debate the sure. flat earthers. I, I take my position. Kansas oh. is flat, the rest of it's round. Uh, and <laughs> well, on our next question for you is from Miss Deviant Outcast, our uh, token Swede today. <laughs> and I believe token it was on Swede. Flat Earth. Yeah, the token Swede. Yeah, I, I had a question question for someone else and um, from someone else sorry I have to adjust my headphones so um, about your position of the flat earth but uh, since you made it pretty clear here and now uh, I'm just gonna say I have absolutely nothing to say to you you have to yeah. translate that oh. again I'm only getting part of that um, well she she had a question about the flat earth the flat earth and then uh since you made it clear that you didn't want to address that she has nothing else to say so we also have faithful to jesus